I've always thought binding your own sketchbook was really cool because it's super customizable and it's just a way to kind of ensure you get what you want out of a sketchbook, but binding a sketchbook as a whole had always been something that seemed very difficult to me, so I definitely strayed away from it, but very recently I was very inspired to make my own sketchbook, so I dove into it and it is not as bad as I thought it would be. So obviously this is not going to be a tutorial because it's the first time I've ever done a bound sketchbook. I'm going to be using the Coptic stitch method and I actually watched a sea lemon video, that's the channel name, while I was making this. I'll leave a link in the description to the exact video I used to kind of put the sketchbook together because it was so immensely helpful and I am very impressed by the just like the fact that sea lemon was able to record what she was doing while making this because it is it's really weird to record while binding a sketchbook. So some of my angles for this process are not pretty but I'll kind of walk you through verbally what I was doing and kind of figure that out. So I'm using the Canson XL watercolor paper on here and what I'm doing in this part is I'm just folding them in half using a bone folder to just press in that edge and then eventually I'm grouping them into signatures. That's pretty much the only terminology I found when it came to binding sketchbooks and a signature is basically as many pages as you want shoved inside of each other to make a little like unbound little book and then you sew those all together later and that's pretty much what a signature is. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> and then I went ahead and I actually used the back of the paper pad to be my hardcover both for the front and back because I felt like First of all, obviously, since I folded the papers in half, it would be the perfect size. And on top of that, it would just give a nice hard cover to it. I also went ahead and I covered it in this really pretty golden red paper that I got from Michaels. And I was actually inspired by Mandy Pandy on Instagram to do my own bound sketchbook because we recently did an art trade together and she asked me to redraw some of her older artwork. So I was looking through her old Instagram posts and I found a bound sketchbook that she made with this exact paper. I actually had this paper previously because I bought it from Michaels because it's such gorgeous, gorgeous paper, but I had to run out and get more. But basically I saw her sketchbook. I was like, you know what? If she can do it, I can maybe do it. And I looked into it and I decided I really wanted to use the same paper that she used because it's really pretty paper. And it kind of has like a fabric-y texture to it. So I thought it would work really well and it would hold up very well as a sketchbook. So we'll kind of see how that goes, but I'll leave a link in the description to her Instagram as well as her YouTube channel. She does have a few videos up here on YouTube. She has absolutely gorgeous art. She's one of those people who follow me and I'm just like, why are you following me? Because your, her artwork is so, so gorgeous. So definitely recommend checking her out. My sketchbook looks pretty much identical to hers, so I'm sorry for copying you, Mandy, but your sketchbook was really pretty and it's, it inspired me to do this, which is something that I don't think I would have done on my own, so thank you. But then I went ahead, I obviously did the covers with the gold and red paper, and I decided to do the inside covers with just a red paper, just so it was something different going on. And I am really glad I did this, actually, because the paper I used in particular, it kind of left like this weird residue on my fingers, like a weird, like dusty, glittery thing on my fingers from the gold. So I am glad I did that so it didn't rub off on the front and back pages of the sketchbook. And then I went ahead and I organized all of my signatures and then I marked on them where I wanted to poke holes to sew through them. This is kind of... I didn't do this in the best way. I probably could have held it down better and made it more aligned, but I definitely knew since this was going to be my first sketchbook that it wasn't going to be perfect. While I was going through and doing this sketchbook, I was very, very closely following a tutorial by Sea Lemon. She has like such a variety of bookbinding tutorials and they're really, really helpful and she does a really good job filming them in a way that you can see what she's doing, which just in my experience of doing this one is immensely hard to kind of capture what you're doing on video. Obviously, like I said, this isn't a tutorial. It's very sped up. I don't really think what I'm doing is the best way of doing it, and I had a lot of trial and error through this, but her tutorials are wonderful. I'll leave a link in the description box below to the exact one I followed in case you guys are interested in doing this on your own. It really didn't take me that long as I thought. It was not as difficult as I thought. This whole process probably took me about two and a half hours and I didn't know what I was doing. I had to follow her tutorial a lot while I was going through it, but it was a really easy project to just sit down and do while I was watching Netflix. I think I was watching Naruto. I say I think I was watching Naruto. I was watching Naruto while I was doing this and it was really fun. It was also recommended by a lot of people that you use beeswax to wax your thread. I did this with a lot of my thread, but towards the last like bit of thread I had, I didn't wax it and I personally didn't have any kind of like difference with it. So I really don't think waxing the thread did 
much of a difference for me. If you're looking to do this, you can try it on your own. I'm sure if you're using regular thread, like regular sewing thread, that would make a big difference. I was just using embroidery thread because I felt like it had much of a less chance of breaking when I was actually working with the sketchbook and I was I was worried about regular thread. So I used embroidery thread. I, I just felt a lot more confident in that. But yeah, the beeswax really did nothing for me. I got some cheap beeswax from Hobby Lobby. I mean like even without the beeswax, it didn't really tangle that much. I didn't experience a ton of tangling with the beeswax. It still tangled a bit, but like it it didn't have any kind of difference for me. And then I started sewing it, which I was excited for but also kind of dreading because I had no idea how long this would take for me to do. But it was really a simple process, like once I got the first signature on there and then figured out how to start attaching other signatures, it was just kind of like a, oh, this is super easy. The biggest mistake that I ended up making with this was I started sewing with a straight needle, which became so difficult to use when I was wrapping around the stitches. It was like nearly impossible to get it to wrap. It was it was very difficult. So once I had finished with that line of thread, I tied it off and I switched over to a curved needle that I had. I had never used that needle before and I was just really lucky that I had it because it was from this little tiny like hand sewing kit that I stole from my mom. I didn't steal it. I asked her for it when I moved out because I didn't have any hand sewing needles and I didn't want to go to the store to get some. So I was just really lucky that I had that because it saved my butt. Also, when I got to the very end of this sketchbook, I started sewing the last signature in, which I shouldn't have done because I needed to kind of do the cover first. So I actually had to go ahead and make another signature to put in the book, which wasn't a big deal. It just added more pages. And then I was able to sew my cover on. The covers are definitely the most difficult part in my opinion. Uh, they're just a lot more work than sewing in the regular signatures. They take a lot more time and energy, but overall it's it's really not that like difficult of a process. And like even just finishing it in general, tying it off, it was it was surprisingly simple. It's a very time consuming process, but it is not a bad one by any means. And then somehow somehow I ended up not running out of thread. I was really worried towards the end of it because the last of the thread is everything that you see there. What is on my needle? That's the last of the thread. And I really didn't want to have to go to Michael's again to go buy thread because that would have that would have been a future process because I think I worked the next day after I made this and it was like 10 p.m. at night. So it was like, oh, wow, I really hope I don't run out of thread. And I didn't, by some miracle. That's literally all the thread I had left over. It was really cutting it close. Something I don't like about this is that the cover is kind of loose, the front cover is. The back cover is really tight on there. I don't know how that happened. I guess I just didn't stitch it as tight as I could have, but that's definitely not something that I'm going to go back and fix because I don't want to play those games. I don't want to go buy more embroidery thread. So overall, I am like immensely proud of this. When I finished it, I was super excited and I like pulled my boyfriend over and I was like, look, I finished it, I made this, that's so freaking cool. This wasn't a difficult process by any means. Like I said, it was just time consuming. And even then, part of the reason that this was so time consuming is because it was my first time doing it. I was like very closely following a tutorial to make sure what I was doing for a good portion of the ways. And I was just like figuring out what I wanted to do, what the best way of doing the steps were and stuff. And it just ended up working out really well. I also decided to add in a little pocket at the very end of the sketchbook in case I ever wanted to squeeze in any swatches or anything like that, or loose sheets of paper. Even though this isn't that big of a sketchbook, I think it's like a 9x6, I think, is what it ended up being once it was all said and done. But this was like a surprisingly simple process, so if you're interested in making your own bound sketchbook, there's a bunch of different stitch types that you can do. I just chose the Coptic stitch, like I said before, because it seemed the easiest, and it ended up turning out really well in my opinion. This was a lot of fun. I'm someone who really likes crafting, so I really had a lot of fun working on this project. So thank you to Mandy for inspiring me to do this. Um, I love her artwork, like I said, link in the description as well as a link to Sea Lemon's video that I followed. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I definitely recommend doing this if you like crafting. It was a lot of fun. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.